Hello guys and girls, welcome back to another episode on the Falcon YouTube channel. Hope everybody is doing well wherever you are in the world. I thank you for tuning in on such a regular basis. It really does mean a lot for the channel and hope you've been enjoying the content. Speaking of content, in this episode, we want to do something a little bit different. So previously, we filmed some very exclusive free training. Now this free training has four parts and we thought that there's so much value in it, whether you're a beginner to trading, whether you've been trading for a while, you're going to take away so many key nuggets for it. Let's share it with you on the YouTube channel. So this is actually part one. Each one builds on each other. So you have to go through the whole process and we'll likely leave a link below so you can actually check out all the four parts. So excited to get into this. Make sure that you take some notes and you're ready to learn these things. These are some of the concepts that I wish I knew as early on in my journey as possible because it would have helped so much more with understanding the bigger picture of the markets and just capitalize more. So let's get into it. But before we do that, I do want to showcase a little bit more about my personal story. Over 12 years ago, guys, I started learning how to trade. It was actually in 2008. I was firstly learning how to become an engineer and the whole office got made redundant. They let us all go. And I had two choices to make in that time. I either feel sorry for myself, which arguably I did for a little bit, or I then invest my time and money and energy into something that's gonna provide me with longer term wealth. And at that time, I built up a little bit of savings and I pretty much used 90% of my savings from my engineering job to invest into learning how to trade. This is when I first started learning how to trade stocks. So in the 2008 period where it was actually pretty difficult to understand what's going on in the financial crisis, I'm now learning how to trade stocks. It was very, very hard. I didn't have the guidance, the mentorship that's available now. I just got chucked into the deep end, went on a three day course in London and then I'm trying to learn how to trade at this point, but you realize it's not that simple. It takes a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of work. I learned the complicated way. I learned lots of different strategies to then realize that it's actually about keeping it simple. It took me so many years, over four years to break through to any level of consistency, four years, banging my head against a brick wall. Because you realize that as humans, we tend to overcomplicate things. But that's not what it's about. It's about keeping things simple. It's about having a systemized approach, keeping things as systematic and not worrying about what affects this and what affects that. Just focus on what actually works and something that has a rule-based system that you can replicate. Keep your risk management low. These are just simple things, but yet we tend to overcomplicate it. And this is what led me to create Falcon. Falcon is all about simplicity. Falcon is about actually doing things that works over a period of 30 years of tested data. Not about making things complicated and confusing you. It's about following simple set of rules tailored to your personality that you can replicate. Living a life of abundance and freedom. And this is why we now have over hundreds of traders go full time trading this way, trading this style, focusing on their passions. And this is what Falcon was about. So I'm very, very humbled by the growth and the commitment from our students and how much we've seen people grow and actually live their best life. And that's all I hope for people. But again, you can, you can take the horse to the water, but you can't make it drink. So we can provide you with the tools, the resources, but unless you're willing to take action, put the work in and be patient, none of that matters. But in this free training, my hope for you is it can lay some solid foundations, aha moments, so you can be working towards living your best life as a trader. So guys, I'm excited to get into it. And very quickly, guys, before we get into it, so this is part one out of four of building these foundations. So make sure that you do take your time with this training. And remember, is this the only way to trade? Of course not. There's hundreds of ways to trade. But what I'm going to highlight for you is a foolproof plan that is systemized, something that's simplistic and easy to follow. And if you like the sound of that and you resonate with it, I'm sure you're going to take tons of value away from this. So let's begin with part one, laying the foundations. Right guys, so let's get into the training. So we are part one. This is laying the foundation. So before we get into the charts, as you can probably see as well, very, very messy. This is not how we trade, by the way. So some of you are probably used to these kind of charts. You may trade this way, which it can be very, very confusing. This is what you're used to looking at. This is what I looked at when I first started in stocks in 2008. And it doesn't need to be this complicated. So we're gonna to get to what a Falcon chart looks like. But before we get into that, the foundations, what are the three things you need to make sure that you're doing? and especially with this training is so important to write down. So what you wanna make sure you have on point is your entry, so knowing how to enter. You wanna have your management on point, knowing how to manage your trades, what you're looking at, and you want to have your risk management on point. Nothing matters unless that third one is in place, which I'll go over to after we get into the charts. So making sure that you have those down, front of mind. So write those down for me. You have your entry, management, and your risk management. These are three 
very, very important things. So let's get into the charts, guys. So as you can see, what have I got on the screen? I've got Kiwi Dollar here. Some of you will be used to looking at charts like this. Let's go to the weekly chart. So we're now looking at this and you're thinking, right, there's indicators, there's MACD, there's support and resistance, there's moving averages. And I mean, we could go a lot more. There's, I've seen some horrific charts in my days, but is this important? That's the question I want to ask you. What serves you? So you may be predisposed to things like key levels. You might think that what happened over here, let's say in this period of 2005, you might think that's relevant to price action here or price action here. I've got news for you, it's not, it's not relevant. Statistically, it's not, it doesn't serve you. Can sometimes you find that where it bounces off of a support and bounces off of a resistance? Of course, of course it does. You can find that everywhere. Is it relevant to the current bit of price action to give you the highest accuracy? No. So it's not that it doesn't work, it's just not as accurate as to what is happening here, which I'm going to show you what that means. So let's actually just kind of decipher and get rid of a few of these things. I mean, a lot of you may or may not trade Belinga bands, and then I've got some EMAs, so if we just slowly get rid of, let's get rid of some EMAs. Now, I'm fully aware some of you might be saying, well, I trade with the EMAs, but not that many. Even then, it's still gonna be holding you back, which you'll see why. So let's just get rid of those. Let's actually look at what does a Falcon chart look like and why do we keep it as simple as that? Let's get rid of this MACD as well. So we're gonna to start to keep things very, very simple. So like I said, what happened here? Resistance here. So, so look, you can see we rejected off of this. I'm not saying it didn't, that's not the point. It's just, is this line here relevant to here or is what happened a rejection here relevant to this bit of price action here or relevant to what's going on now? So just because you can see it bouncing off and rejecting doesn't mean that's relevant. And that's the point that I'm making. So it's not that it doesn't work and can't work because you can see it does. It's more so what's going to keep it simple for you. If you want a simplistic approach, if you want to have all these things, then by all means, but if you want a systematic rule-based system, this is going to help you. So now let's get rid of it all. Let's build it as a Falcon way. So what I want you to look at firstly is look at the charts and then identify firstly what is the psychology of the market? So if we just look at all this bit of price action on Kiwi Dollar, what can we learn from it? Well, the first thing I wanna teach you, which is really important in the foundation level, is mass psychology. So essentially, think of it like this. Where are people losing money? They are losing money because they buy the highs and they sell the lows. What does that mean? Well, when price keeps going up, 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 and up, they fear that they're gonna not get involved in the trade, and then they start to buy in these areas and then what happens, the market sells off. It's exactly the same thing on the flip side. The market goes down, 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 and you can see if I, even if I zoom out across the board, how many times, especially in this area here. So you can see, let's do it with just a typical support. So you can see, right, we reject, we reject, we go back up, we go down, 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 down. It's in this zone, it's in these areas. This is where people are being caught on the wrong side of the market. This is mass psychology. So you've got to understand how are people winning, how are people losing. Well, you need enough people on the wrong side of the market for the institutional funds, the banks, the real money to come into the market. So how Falcon is positioned and how it's set up is to put you in the right side of the market. That's where you want to be. So that is one of the biggest edge already that I've just taught you, identifying those areas. I'm going to give you some homework at the end of this module to go and find for yourself rather than just you know cherry picking a few here. This is relevant for 30 years of data. So again, it's areas like this where you see support, support, and then it's this. This is what you should be focusing on. So what we do at Falcon is that we recognize consistent patterns in these areas that tells us as to, is it a reversal? Is it a continuation? Is it gonna carry on going? Or is it gonna break back into the pattern? And where can we identify what gives us our entry criteria following a systematic approach? That's what we're doing. So we identify those areas. Where are people being caught on the wrong side of the market? Now, sometimes it doesn't need to go that low. You can see in that scenario, we really convince people to break. And you're probably used to things like, right, we break, we retest, and then we go short. It's very, very basic. The market's not that simple. Yes, you can find things that work in that sense, but I'm talking about, generally speaking, in the bigger picture, the market's not moving like that. In this scenario, you can see that we've got, right, on that one, we literally hit perfectly a double top, right? But there's something else happening here. There's actually a particular pattern. So from what you see, if you don't understand how the market is getting there, and you're just looking at the fact that, right, this rejected here, rejected here, and then you find 
another area, for example, let me just chuck this in to give you a bit of context. Let's say here, right? So we chuck this in. You can see, right, this rejected here. This kind of just went above, went back down there. And you can see that, right, we rejected here again. We rejected here. You could see, oh, this is valuable, right? This is resistance. Is this resistance the same as that resistance? No. Why is it not? These are just random rejections that happen to just align. And I could put them loads of different places and find random lines there. The difference is with this one is because there's a particular pattern that's happening. Let me just delete this to make it simple. There's a particular pattern here that we are studying, that we are familiar with, that we trade this all the time, that is giving us an edge to get into the market. And why is that important? We are increasing our probability by understanding how is price getting to this area. So if you don't know how it's getting there, then you're doing yourself a disservice. So it's about looking at these areas and realizing, right, so if I understand these patterns, I know how to break down the inside of these patterns, can I get an edge? The answer is yes dramatically so you just need to know simple patterns we only focus on about four or five there's lots of different patterns in the market but we're just looking for the same thing over and over again it consistently repeats there's just variations of the same pattern so i'll give you an example you have an ascending channel right you have an ascending channel that is essentially the market moving up and typically you see this as a reversal so when you see a channel like this you're looking for this to sell off this channel is exactly the same as this channel the only difference is this is tighter and this is wider. And then within the patterns, there's just a few variations you need to understand. It's really simple to follow once you know what they are. If you don't, you're looking at all these random lines that don't mean anything. So what we have on a Falcon chart is this. We're looking at what price is happening here. So remember, what did I say earlier? I said, if we just zoom out, I said that when we break here, we're getting traders caught on the wrong side of the market here to move back up. So now if we look at this bit of price action, what are we also seeing? Now remember, it's not guaranteed. This is just the majority of the time, this is what happens. So if we're looking at this area here now then, and we're going right, so how can we apply that same knowledge? We can see, say rejection here, rejection here, rejection here, and we're just breaking above now. So are we expecting this to retest and go long? No, we're not. We're actually expecting this to come back down into the pattern. So we're expecting this to break back into the pattern. Why is that? It's because we have identified a particular pattern that gives us an indication that we're getting traders caught on the wrong side. Again, the amateurs are buying the highs and then they're selling the lows, right? They're selling here when they think the market's just gonna keep going. Guess what? Breaks back into the pattern. So this is just typical like clockwork. I mean, this is how we trade day in, day out. So now we go to what would we look at in Falcon? All that is relevant to us is this. This is all that's relevant to us. And let's take it back. So we don't even use the support. We're looking at, this is just a ray line tool, by the way. You can, of course, get this on your trading view. And we are essentially looking at this. If I take price back to this area, what can you see? You can see that price rejects this area here, right? So we reject. As we reject this area, we move to the downside. We know it's a possibility that we don't have to reject from here. We can actually start to break above, get people confused and caught on the wrong side real money comes into the market. So by understanding that, that gives us a massive edge in the markets. So now you can see, right, well, we've completely broken through. So this will confuse people. So then we have to go to the lower time frames. We work our way down. So we're going to weekly, daily, four hour, one hour, 15 minute. We're utilizing all these time frames, but you need to know how to use auto You need to know how to use all of them, which we have full course, everything laid out. I want to give you some insights here. So as you can see what do we have what do we have happening now so we can connect this channel we're actually looking at this right now in our community which is really important so this will give you more of an insight so yes we broke above here now like i said this is again another ascending channel there's very many different variations as to how you get involved in this just because you see rejections doesn't mean you sell we still need confirmation so it's about understanding that you have the system, then you wait for confirmation, then you execute. Remember, entry, know how to manage, like I said, right? So you know where to enter, which is in this area, where are we going to manage it? Our target will be the bottom of the channel and then potentially here, which brings in our 90% rule. So we have a 90% probability, once something happens in this area, that we'll get to here, a 90% probability that you can test. So that gives us a massive edge. Then we go to our risk management, how much are we risking? We're risking 1% of our account per trade. 
1%. Don't play with the numbers. I'll get to the probability part in a minute. I'm giving you some very, very valuable bits of knowledge here that it took me so many years to craft and learn. So looking at things from a simplistic approach, you might be thinking, is that all I need? Yes, you do not need to overcomplicate it. So what can we see? Mass psychology. So price tests here. Guess what? Sells off, comes back up. Trickle, 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 rejects. Trickles around here, then guess what? Breaks through. So what is it doing? It's getting traders caught on the wrong side of the market before we look for the sell. Does this have to sell from here? No, it doesn't. But this pattern right now is showing us signs of that. It's not about 100%, it's that if we focus on patterns like this, 70 to 80% of the time, we're going to have a profitable edge. That is what it's about. It's not about having a guaranteed system. If the market can carries on up and breaks through, that's when we take a message and say, do you know what? This pattern was showing us signs that we're gonna look for selling opportunities, but in this scenario, it didn't work out. Who cares? We just then move on and find something else, and then we trade accordingly. That's the beauty of keeping things simple. We're not attached to a bias. We're not attached to, oh, well, this has to happen. That's where your ego is involved and you get humbled in seconds. So for us, we then, firstly, we look at entry, right? So we're waiting for confirmation in this area. Management. We know that this area here, this is no longer that relevant, so we can kind of move that out of the way for now. That was just to showcase to you guys that this is the psychology of the high, and that's where people are getting caught on the wrong side. That is all that to show you. What is relevant right now is to look for our entry from here to here to manage it, first target. Second target will be at the beginning at the 90% raw as I was talking about. Then it's our risk management. We risk 1% per count. So remember, I hope you've got those three things written down. Very, very important. Now imagine in a day-to-day -day world, do you want to be a slave to the charts, by the way? Do you want all this complicated stuff or do you want to learn how to keep things simple? That's the question I want to ask you. We don't trade every day. You don't need to trade every day. Remember, brokers, the market, they want you to trade every day because they benefit from that. If you're trading all the day, every single day, you're encouraging yourself to overtrade and lose your money. What we're doing at Falcon is that we're encouraging you to have a plan and systemized and trade when the market gives you permission. Trade when the market gives you confirmation, not just to be in the market all the time. That's a lose-lose. So have things simple. So those are the three pillars. So now you can see how simple it is. That's what we're looking for. So right now in the markets, we're looking for confirmation. Do we have confirmation? Not just yet. And again, there's various patterns that we look for in this last section that gives us an indication whether we're going to look for a sell or not. And it really is that simple. I'll give you an example. Let's go to, we, this is our watch list right now. So Aussie Yen, we're looking for a potential entry here for this to continue to the downside. So excuse the drawings here, but I just want to keep it as raw as possible. So let's keep it simple. So previously, what do we have? Let's just remove the structure. Again, a very, very, what we're seeing on Aussie Yen right now, by the way, what a profitable pattern this is. This is a very, very highly profitable pattern that we're seeing here. Again, that's just one of the four to five that we focus on. But look at this here, what happens? There we go, prime example again. Market, tests in this area, tests again, tests again. What happens? We break above. What is retail thinking right now? What is dumb money, essentially, getting caught on the wrong side? What is it thinking? Okay, so we broke that high, we broke that high, we broke this, we, we failed, we failed to break it and we broke back down. You're probably used to hearing this, this terminology again. And then right now we broke out, the bulls are in control. It doesn't matter about that anymore. Forget what you've learned, it's not serving you. And now, as we come back down, you're expecting, let's say, retest to go long? You know, let me know, be honest if you feel that way, we are predicting and expecting Aussie Yen to move to the downside. I mean, you can go and follow this in our webinars. This is what we look at every single time. So we're expecting this to break the high. Again, mass psychology, what I taught you, catch traders on the wrong side. Can you see how at the foundation level, this is what you need? This is the foundation of you understanding where is the wrong side of the market and where is the right side? And how can you position yourself on the right side of the market? Then you add the other layers to it, which is, the systemized approach, the trading plan, the strategy, everything you need to know, all the variations to be able to follow these rules and execute, that's it. You know, you don't need to be trading by the charts all day long. On average, we can take eight to 10 trades per month. Some people that are a little bit more active with the strategy, they take 15 trades or 20 trades. It really comes down to suiting you. That's the great thing about this style. It's flexible to your personality. So a prime example of that, and then again, what are we expecting? We're expecting price to get traders on the wrong side of the market, think that's a retest, and eventually break to the downside. And then long behold, like clockwork, 
happens again, right? So it breaks to the downside. And then what are we looking at for, let's say, again, another one, pound yen. So again, we are looking for sales on pound yen, price moves a bit higher. So we'll be waiting for a particular pattern in this area to look for this, to take it to the downside. It's not ready just yet. But once it is, that's what we'll look for. What happens again, right? So we can just see this like clockwork again. What you may see is, let's say, a resistance and price tests, tests, breaks through, catch trades on the wrong side. It's the same thing, it doesn't change. Let's just delete all of that, you can see more clearly. So, we're looking at this, and then we're seeing this bit of price action. This is an incredible tool, by the way. So this is called bars pattern. Go and find this tool. You can drag price, and then you can replicate it, and then you can actually test. You can go back and then see how these fit in and how regular they are. So, we're essentially looking at this bit of price action, and that is teaching us everything that we need to know that that is going to sell off. So when I see price action like this, does that convince us that we're gonna break and go long? Not at all. We're expecting the total opposite. Again, dumb money. This is people on the wrong side of the market. You wanna be on the right side of the market as consistently as possible. You're not gonna get it right every time, but that's why we're looking at it the way we're looking at it, and then we're looking for that move to the downside. So you can see from a direction point of view what we're looking at. And again, same pattern that's happening here. This is actually a particular Falcon pattern that's happening here and we're looking for selling opportunities. We just need this to form to give us our entry criteria and then we'll execute. Apart from that, you stay out of the market, you protect your capital first and foremost. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm speeding things up here, guys, but it's this, this bit of knowledge that I'm teaching you now took me years and years to apply. You know, Just because it looks simple doesn't mean it is simple. I'm giving you the simplistic approach to follow. It takes a long time to get to that stage. So that's exactly why, going back to Kiwi Dollar, and you can see why we're looking at it. What's happening again? Traders getting caught on the wrong side of the market, the mass psychology. This is your foundation level training. So I wanna to talk to you very quickly now about what I want you to do. I'll give you your homework in a second. It's gonna help build your foundation. Is understanding this, probabilities. So I spoke about the three core things, which is what? Entry, management, and risk management. Those three things you have to have in place. Then you have to understand probability. So let's say for example we're sitting together and i flip a coin we've got we've got a coin and we just choose heads or tails right let's say you take heads if we flip that 100 times what, how many times is it likely for you to get heads i think we could all agree it's just a 50 50 chance right 50 50. so we know that if we sit there we flip it 100 times we can say you know within a few you know tosses whether it's 55 45 whatever it is you know roughly it will be 50 50 because probability would suggest that so then we look at it one step further and say right so you know that 50 percent of the time that will happen can you tell me the sequence let's say we're sitting there together we're flipping the coin can you say to me mark right in the first 10 flips it's going to go heads 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 tails heads heads tails etc etc probably not could i no no one could because it's probabilities. But you do know that 50% of the time it will work. So we can agree on that thing. This is a little bit like trading. So you have an edge, you have a strategy, and you put that edge in your favor to know that more often than not, or 50% of the time, or 70% of the time, that will play out for you. So our goal, when we're looking at these patterns, these consistent patterns that have been tested over 30 years of data, that we're looking at how often do they repeat themselves. We're working with 70%, 80%. So we're working with high probability patterns that are consistently playing out over time. So that way, then imagine that you're now flipping the coin and that you could have a weighted coin. Let's say, call it 70%. Let's say that you have a weighted coin on the head side of 70%. If you was to flip that 100 times, how much percentage do you think it would hit your heads? 70, right? You know, it's weighted 70% on the head side, so more often than not, that you're hitting 70%. So if you was to back yourself with a formula, with a strategy, that you knew that 70% of the time it would play out in your favor, and you took 100 trades over a larger sample size, would you be more profitable than not? The answer is yes. So then you're asking, well, if it's that easy, everybody would do it, so why is it that people lose? They lose because they can't stick to the foundations that I just laid for you. Entry, management, risk, the third part. The risk is the most important thing. They cannot stick to risk they play with the numbers. Let me give you a brief example before I give you your homework. Trader A, trader B. Let's say you're trading with a 10,000 pound account. 10,000 pound account, 
you're trading 1% of your account, right? So we're looking at 100 pound per trade. So trader A sticks to that. Trader B decides that, right, this trade on Kiwi Dollar that we're looking at right now, this looks incredible. Um, everything stacks up, all of it lines up. I've seen how it plays out time and time again with this pattern. Let me trade it again. I'm gonna stick 500 pounds on it because it just feels good. They're acting out of emotion. Pure probabilities, it's not guaranteed. So this trade happens to be a loser. So trader A that stuck to risk, risk management, they've lost 100 pounds. Trader B decides to get cocky, ego involved in the market, they're risking 500 pounds. They've taken exactly the same trade for the same reason, but another, the trader B that's emotional and can't stick to rules, can't stick to risk, has just lost 5% of their account because they've risked 500 pounds. So you see the difference. It's not about that, it's not about just having a clear strategy that works. It's about following what you need to do at the foundation level. Understanding mass psychology, understanding how to enter the market, understanding where is your management, where are you going to manage the trade. You need to know this in advance, otherwise you'll act emotional. And then at the last one, which people just don't do enough, which is why they lose in this market, it's not their intelligence, not their IQ, none of that. It's because they cannot stick to risk because of greed. So what we do at the foundation level is really get to grips with having a probabilistic mindset, understanding probabilities. When you learn to think in probabilities, you don't play with the numbers. Because like I said, if we flip the coin a hundred times, how on earth could you tell me the sequence of heads, tails, heads, heads, tails, tails? No one could. So how on earth can we be so arrogant in the market to have our ego involved that you can pick and choose when you want to play with risk? That you can say, right, this exact trade, this I'm going to risk a thousand on this. How on earth could you know that? How could anyone on the planet know that? And because we don't know that, we don't need to. But what we can do is we can stick to risk. So we can stick to 1% of our account per trade. We can be humble or the market will humble us in seconds. And then we have everything in place and we follow our rules. So you see how when you keep things simple and you realize why people are losing, rather than just saying, right, a lot of people, they're not doing well in trading. Well, they're not doing well because they're greedy. They don't have their goals in place. They don't have a purpose. They don't actually know how to follow a system. And they're just risking whatever they feel like. Well, you're destined to lose. You're a gambler, not a trader. So my goal in this training is to help you think more like a trader, think like a professional. So I hope you've got that in place. So homework, guys. So I've given you a bit of knowledge here, very powerful knowledge that took me years to learn, as I said. And what I want you to do is I want you to pick any chart. So pick any currency pair. What I want you to do is go to your chart. You may have some complicated stuff on there. Go to the bin tool, delete that. And I want you to do this. I want you to pop on just, and again, my goal for you is just to identify where are people getting caught on the wrong side of the market. So I want you to find highs and lows like this, right? I want you to find highs and lows Go onto the daily chart, ideally, daily and weekly. Plot them on and start to find out, right, where are people getting caught on the wrong side of the market? Where are you seeing big reverses in price? Just pop them on and then see how many times people are being caught on the wrong side of the market. So what I mean by that, let's say for example, you see a rejection here, moves back up, just re rejects above. I want you to find as many of those when the market reverses to sell and reverses to buy as possible. So then you can start to pop them on and realize, right, that is the wrong side of the market. I don't wanna be on that side of the market. What I wanna do is identify those areas because if I can help you identify those areas where most people are losing, I'm already giving you an edge straight away, which is very, very powerful. So go and do that, pop that on. Then in module two, in the next part of the free training, we're gonna be going over consistency and I'm gonna be teaching you some hacks and simple things that's gonna help you become more of a consistent trader. So I'm excited to get into it. So make sure that you do that, take your time with it, plot it along. I think you're gonna find this very, very valuable. So I hope you've taken some notes. Right guys, so I really hope you enjoyed that different take on this episode and you enjoyed part one. There's so many key concepts in there. I'm very confident you've probably started to write loads of these things down. And it's important, right? Because there's so many key concepts that would have helped me such a long time ago. You realize, wow, now I actually understand what is actually happening. What side of the market do I need to be in? All these tiny things that you just never really know and you have to find out the hard way. So I wanted to share this with you all and it just gives you something to think about. It gives you a real edge within the market. So remember, this is part one. Each part builds on each other. So if you haven't seen it already, check the link below because we have access to all the four parts. So if you enjoyed this and you took some value from it and you want to learn more to that, you can check out part two, part three, part four, and they all build on each other. So I appreciate it as always. Hope everybody is having an incredible day, morning, evening, wherever you are in the world. And again, you know, right now in this period of time, it's 
it's really pushing on to the end of the year. So I'm very, very excited to be sharing this value with you and really just finish as strong as possible so we can take that into 2021 with the best possible start. Let us know your number one takeaways in this episode. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next episode, guys.